Not too long ago, I promised you that we're going to be teaching you more about videography because cameras these days can do videos slightly more effective than photos. And we all find that shooting videos are way much easier than photos. You agree? And this is to start you correctly. Today's lesson, what is frame per second? You know, in fact, the whole YouTube has gone crazy about choosing the right frame per second, otherwise your video will break. That's not true. Frame per second. This happens because when you actually look at a video or movie, it's actually not a movie. It's actually a series of photos played back sequentially very quickly, like 25 photos in one second. And that is why it's called 25 frame per second. But the world is littered with a lot of different frame per second. You have 24 frame per second, you have 23.97 frames per second, and then you have 25, 30, 60, 100. What are they? How do you use them? Subscribers, good news. This lesson that you're about to enjoy comes directly from our recently launched e-learning of videography. Not too long ago, we started a new project. We call them co-branded e-learning. What does that mean? It means that we're making e-learning truly affordable by having good international and kind brands coming in and sponsoring your education. So if you go onto my website and check out this course, this course is proudly sponsored by Hollyland and you get 17 video lessons filled with how you can get started with videography. You should check out this e-learning now and enjoy the price. Look at the price now. Look at the price before the sponsorship. So if you sign up now, you're going to get it at this amazing price. And as such, let's get started correctly with frame per second. So in the previous lesson, I introduced to you the big four of making good videos, which is the script or the story and the shot itself, the sound and the editing. At this point, you're probably thinking that, hey, where's the camera? Well, here's the thing. As long as your camera can capture video, you're going to be okay. But I know this is disturbing to a lot of tech junkies that goes like, no, there's such thing as frame per second you have to worry about and shutter angle and aperture and exposure and ISO. What, are you telling us that this doesn't matter? Well, let's still start correctly. They do if you really want to be a famous movie director making really good quality cinema ads or film to be broadcasted into TV stations, then all that matters. But this is a basic and beginner course that gets you started. So that's why I'm saying it's not that important. But okay, I tell you what, it's still important. Let's go through all of this. There are four things that you need to have or to be able to control in your camera. The first one, FPS, frame per second. The second one, the resolution of your camera. The third one, the exposure, making sure that your video footage is not too bright or not too dark. And then the fourth one, making sure that the videos that you take look sharp and blurry where they're supposed to blur. First one, FPS, frame per second. This by far is one of the toughest to learn, the most controversial and the most annoying thing a videography teacher can encounter. But let me promise you this, it doesn't really matter. You will still get your video. It doesn't mean that you are FPS or you don't understand this, you break this value, your videos will break. So we're gonna start with frame per second now. To start with frame per second, this is the world map. And the countries of the world have been divided into two camps for the longest time. The first camp and the second camp. What are these? Countries that uses electricity of alternating current of 60 Hz. And countries that alternating current of 50 Hz. Which means that countries here, the polarity of the electricity will flip 60 times per second. And here 50. Well, what, what is that? Why am I learning electricity? Hang on. This is your battery. Your battery has fixed polarity, positive here and negative here. But to go the distance from the power station to your house, power station needs to use alternating current, which means that they flip the polarity in one second 60 times, which means that you have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, not like your battery. If, if you look at the battery, this is what it does. 60 times a second. And that is one of the reasons why electricity can travel so far from the dam dam to your house. And how does that matter? 
Well, finally, when it reaches your house, you plug in a table lamp. The table lamp or any devices that emit light would actually flicker. But hey, I don't see it. Well, you don't see it because it flickers faster than your eyes, unless you are this guy. Then you may see the flicker. However, if you were to take a video camera and point it to this light source, you may see the flicker if the setup of the camera is not correct. And that's why we need to learn frame per second. So if you look at all the video cameras, you notice that you now have NTSC and PAL. What, what is it? You didn't? I did. NTSC are countries that use 60 hertz. PAL, 50 hertz. And of course, we have the second, which is also 50 hertz. But if you look at more modern cameras, when you press on frame per second option, you actually see 24, 25, 30, 50, 60. Now, if you really look at this number, they fall neatly into two numbers. Numbers that are divisible by 30, 60, and 120. And then you have the numbers which are 25, 50, and 100. You are smart. PAL and TSC. So if your countries flicker at 50 hertz, choose any of this number. If your country is 60 years, choose any of this number. What happens if I choose them wrongly? It's okay. As long as you don't point your camera to an electric light source, you don't have this problem. Which means that there are filmers and videographers that don't set this correctly and they're shooting natural lighting in the evening sun which doesn't flicker, you will have no problem. You won't see flickering lights. But if you were to point it to a light source that flickers, Arsing with your camera's frame per second, you're gonna see it like this. Does that mean I can actually choose my frame per second wrongly and still look okay? Well, it depends. If you were to choose your camera at 25 frame per second during editing in your editing software, make sure that you choose 25 as well. And when you compile the video, ensure that you do the same as well. So it's 25, 25, 25. If you choose 30, 30, 30. But don't go into the mistake of choosing 25, 30, and then 20. You're going to be in trouble. What are you going to see? You won't exactly see only flicker. You may see jerky video like this, especially when the camera moves or pen. But if you were to put your camera steady on a tripod, just like now, and the frame per second is wrong, it is just me moving, you may not exactly see it. And in modern times, when the internet is so slow and sometimes congested, you may even mistake this jerkiness as a slow download. So who really cares? However, as you go professional, these numbers are important. So how do you decide? Simple. We have this person to ask. Producers. Hey, clients. What frame per second you want? Where, which country you want to play this in? Not sure? Choose a higher number. Because the logic is this. 60 frame per second, 60 bucks can always afford 30 bucks. 50 bucks can always afford 25 bucks because videos are actually made up of photos, series of photos put in in one second. So 25 frames per second means that you have 25 photos in one second. And when you play them back, they look like a video. It's a little bit like your photography time lapse. If you're a photographer, you would have understood this. If you look at my e-learning of landscape photography, we go to time lapse and it's sequential photos being played back. So the more frames you have in per second, the more fluid it is. And here's the thing. If you make sure that you have enough frame, you can actually take them away. And why would people choose higher numbers like this? Simple slow motion. So let me summarize this. These numbers, if you're shooting something that is involving human or drama or short film, if you're shooting something which is slow motion, you need more frame per second, more, more frames to play with and then stretch it out in time. So I hope this makes it easy for you. And then it's very simple rule. Point the camera at the light source. Regardless, point the camera at any artificial light source and see whether it flickers. Because you have a mirrorless camera and a hybrid camera, you can see the flicker. And this is so important because sometimes the place that you're filming in the location has this really cheap light source that flickers. So how do you overcome this? You have two choices. Go filming with a box of light bulbs like this that you can swap out. That's what we do. We have a department called Art Department that does this, that swap out light bulbs to higher non-flickering light bulbs. They're more expensive. Or remove that darn light. Or change your composition. 
So that's why I don't really worry about frame per second. Or you can actually ask your client, what is a frame per second? There are two things can happen. You can say like, oh, let's go for 30. Good. Get him to sign off. Or I can say like, why are you asking me? Decide. And what do you do? Decide. And then point the camera to the light source. And then talk to your friends and agree with it. So does it matter when I upload it on social media and what does YouTube and Facebook play it off with? It doesn't matter. It is just during filming, during editing, and during compilation of your video. That's it. When it plays back, it plays back. And of course, your screen would have a different refresh rate, which you can choose of 50 hertz, or 60, or even 75, but that's another story on another day. Wait a minute. Andrew, why is there now 24? I can understand the 25 and the 30. Well, frame per second has been something pretty influenced by the legacy of the cinema world. Well, remember the days where cinema were playing silent movies? Silent movies were okay, you can go out of sync and you notice that they are actually out of sync, you see the jerkiness. That's all okay because the lips of the actor and the audio doesn't need to sing because there's no audio. But then, as audio comes in, cinema has a problem now because they now need to agree and make sure that the lips and the dialogue sync up. And to do that, they need to play it at a higher frame rate. And here's the bigger problem. When audio was introduced to silent movies, I congratulated him and I had a nice talk with his wife. How have you two girls been getting along? Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. I bet you did all the talking. Mm -hmm. Cinema across the globe were playing them at a different projector frame per second. They were going from 22 to 26. So then the studios and all of them get together and say that, hey, we need to compromise. We need to come up with a number, otherwise we won't sing. So Yi Chong, 22 and 26, what's the common number we can all agree on? 24. That's how you get this legacy number of the cinema world of 24 per second. Which means that now when you hear Flimmer say, let's do a cinematic footage of this. Which means that they want to shoot it at 24 frames per second. Because all of us for decades and years have been used to that motion that you see in cinema movies. That grit and that... that you know, it's not exactly as fluid as the drama. That's why when you look at a drama like Dynasty, you can go like, okay, that's a drama. But when you look at a movie, you go like, hey, that's a cinema movie. You could tell that's because of 24 frames per second. And then you go like, why is my camera having 23.97 now? Listen, it's 24. And again, it's a legacy thing. Because when it comes to terrestrial broadcasts, they were a little bit out of sync. And during that time, the broadcast engineers realized that if they put in a factor of 0.1 on this frame rate, they get 23.97, it actually jerks less. That's how you get this. Does it matter anymore? No. I mean, who watches terrestrial TV anymore? Who watches silent TV anymore? So, if you want it to look cinematic, 24 frames per second, looking like a John Wick movie. And then if you want to look fluid 25 or 30 based on the country that you have so what are we going to be doing frame per second for the rest of our project i'm in malaysia malaysia is here so i'm using 25 frame per second so if you're watching this from us does it matter it doesn't matter because i'm not editing this in us and i'm not my light source doesn't come from united states so i hope you enjoyed this lesson if you do head on to this e-learning here on this website. Take opportunity of this great price that you're enjoying here and look at all the video lessons that you can learn. You can learn things like resolution frame per second, how to set up your camera correctly, how to add light to your shoot, how to focus correctly, how to work with actors, how to work with scripts and turn them into storyboards, dialogues, and know when to cut and what all these cuts and transitions do. We need your support.